Welcome. I hope you've been keeping well. It's good to see you. The timestamps are in the description box. Let's get started with today's stories. Story number one. Opie writes, I, 33 female, met my ex-husband Dan, 40 male, almost 15 years ago at a restaurant when I was celebrating my 18th birthday. He was really nice, charming and mature. He made me feel loved and special. For some context, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. My mom and dad used to always fight. My dad would sometimes go out and not come back for months. He died when my sister Abby, 25 female, was born. My mom was way too fond of Abby since her birth rather than me. Abby was basically babied by my mother. She didn't neglect me at all, always did her best as a mother and provided for me, but I always felt something's missing. After Dan came into my life, I didn't feel like there was something missing from me. He supported me, he was caring. He would always buy me gifts and take me out for long drives. I felt complete when I was with him. We got married after dating for four years. I wanted to start a family right away, but Dan encouraged me to do my masters and help me build my career. He wanted us to be in a stable position financially before we start thinking about having kids. Seriously, he was the best guy I could ever ask for. After five years of being happily married, I discovered that my husband was cheating on me with Abby. I discovered the affair when my husband made an excuse that he will go out of town for a week, but he stayed in town and he booked a hotel room where he and Abby can have sex. This had been going on for six months behind my back. I was really devastated. Abby and I were close growing up. I loved her and cared for her. How could she do this to me? After the D-Day, Dan and I had a fight. I asked how could he do this to me, that too with my sister who just turned 19. He said he didn't love me anymore, that I didn't give him enough attention, that I'm not the same girl he fell in love with. Between the mess, I discovered that I was pregnant, but due to the stress, I lost the baby. He was having a weekend getaway with my sister. I should have seen the signs. Abby would always be touchy with Dan. Dan would sometimes stare at her, but it is still very disturbing to me. My mother, as usual, took Abby's side and told me to just make peace with it. I wanted to end myself because I had no one left. Lost my child and my husband, my whole family. Then my best friend, Tina, my savior, came to my rescue. She was moving to another state and asked me to come with her. I said yes. I was already divorced at that point and we lived in a small town, so I would obviously run into my ex and my sister. It took me a while to settle into my new life in a different state, but I met some kind people there. It helped me heal some trauma. I still have trust issues. I met my now husband Tony, 32 male, after one year of moving to the new place. I was really hesitant and kept my guard up, but he showed me that he is trustworthy and loves me a lot. I was so happy with him that I almost forgot about the life I had back in my hometown. His parents were really welcoming and generous people. We got married a year ago. I am now pregnant with our first child. Yesterday, I got an email from my ex, Dan. It just brought back all the bad memories. I am just paraphrasing his email. He mentioned that he misses me. He tried to find me but couldn't. He is very miserable with my sister. She is very dumb and doesn't care about him like I do. I used to bake him a cake and throw birthdays for him but Abby only texted him happy birthday and didn't even bother to buy him a cake. Plus, she is very rude. She doesn't respect him. She is always at the bar with her friends. He also mentioned that she has cheated on him five times already. The last affair was with his cousin. Our mother also doesn't stop her. He will soon file for a divorce, but lately he has been missing me a lot. He wants us to try again as a couple. He wants us to become a family just like before. Since I do not have social media except for Instagram, which is private, he probably doesn't know that I am married and I have a baby on the way. I don't know if I should feel pity for him or just laugh because the grass on the other side is very brown rather than green. Update. I just wanted to say thanks to all of you who messaged and showed me support. I have decided to send him an email and be done with it. It goes like, Dan, 
I am sorry to hear you are suffering, but there is no way I would be with you. Yes, there was a time when I used to be that girl who would have taken you in a heartbeat, but that girl is not there anymore. That girl has died. The day I had a miscarriage and you were somewhere shacking up with my sister. I called you, but you never picked it up. I am married to a wonderful man who loves me and cherishes me. I am also pregnant with our first child. I am beginning this new chapter of my life with someone I love and care for deeply. So please do not contact me ever again. You made your choice. You chose my barely legal sister over me. I do not care if she cheats on you or she doesn't respect you. Someone like you don't deserve loyalty and respect anyways. I have left my old life in my old town. It will be best for you to move on and have some self-respect on yourself. You are just a deeply insecure man who is getting old and thought having a young woman would be good by your side. Goodbye. Update 2. A lot of you have been asking me what he replied. Well, he replied within an hour of me emailing him. He said that he was stupid enough to believe that I would still wait for him. And he said he would always wait for me because no matter what, I will always be his baby doll. I cringed hard. He used to call me that, but now it feels repulsive. I also got an email from my mom and my sister. My mom congratulated me and was excited that she was going to be a grandmother. And my sister also did the same and said she will be, quote, cool aunt, unquote. I cannot believe these people. They forgot how they treated me when I needed them and moreover betrayed me. I cried for a long time because I have been reading your comments and it seems like me and my sister were groomed by that man. I feel so stupid. I know I shouldn't be mad at my sister, but she was old enough to know it's bad to have an affair with a married man. That too, someone who is your sister's husband. I blocked all of them. I am five months pregnant already. I don't need more stress. Bless my husband. He comforted me when I cried. Later took me out for ice cream. I hope I can move past this. Update 3 I am cooled down now. I think I can make a more elaborate update. Thanks to everyone who has shown me support. I needed it. The email from him, my ex, just struck me like a train. I had flashbacks of everything he has done to me. I think you guys deserve a detailed update. After I sent him the reply mail, he emailed me within an hour with the thing I said in my update to part. Few hours later, I get two other emails from my mom and sister. They sent it to my old email address that I hardly use now. I don't know how they knew about the pregnancy. I try to keep a low profile. I still haven't posted my baby bump pics on social media or made any announcements. I only have Instagram to follow my friends, but it just scared me. I broke down crying on the spot. Luckily, my husband, Tony, was around. He held me and put me on the couch. He knows everything about me. I never hid anything from him. I was a bit scared that my mom and sister would find me. He reassured me that I am hundreds of miles away from them. I mean, we are on the opposite part of our country. He took me out for ice cream to comfort me. It took two ice cream cones to finally calm me down, lol. I told him about my concerns and that my mom and sister might demand to see my baby. It's a girl. He told me he would talk to his uncle, who is a police officer, to be on the lookout for them. Even if they come here and force themselves on you, he would fight for it. He is going to consult his lawyer friend about this matter and told me not to worry about my ex. He cannot harm me anymore. My husband even made a joke that he would move countries if he has to. Lastly, someone in my post commented that I should alert the daycare about my mom and sister in case they try to steal my baby. Well, we aren't planning to put her in daycare. Even though I am currently working, I decided I would quit my job and look after my baby and focus on healing from giving birth. I do have a good amount of savings in my personal bank and this is my own decision. I will go back to work when our little princess is a little bit older. My in-laws are amazing. My mother-in-law and father-in-law lives nearby. They are both good people and offer to help with my child. 
Also, don't worry, apart from my in-laws, I have a good support system too. Tina and her wife, Jenny, basically adopted me, lol. They are really good people and always helped me. I don't know what will happen in the future, but at least I am surrounded by good people that I never had growing up. Now I will take your leave and enjoy my husband pampering me. If something big happens, I will keep you guys updated. And my ex, sister and mother are all blocked. OP, I'm happy that you've created this wonderful new life for yourself. And it's really striking how Dan and your sister and your mom think that they can just casually make their way back into your life as if nothing ever happened. Isn't it very telling when people do something that's very destructive and causes a lot of pain and they never even acknowledge the pain that they caused? It means that it didn't mean anything to them. They still don't get it. And that alone is a very good reason to never allow them, OP, never allow these people back in your life. They seem like they pretty much deserve each other. I mean, really too bad for Dan if your sister doesn't respect him, doesn't bake him a birthday cake, hangs out with her friends at the bar, cheats on him. You know, Dan got what he deserved. The audacity that he thinks he can come and cry on your shoulder about the way your sister has been treating him. Too bad, Dan, too bad. Opie, I wish you the very best. It sounds like you've got a wonderful husband in Tony. Congratulations with the baby. Never look back. And on we move to story number two. Opie writes, I, 27 male, was heavily bullied since the beginning of kindergarten until the end of middle school when I transferred to a different town. My classroom had 15 children, me excluded. Out of these 15, seven of them used to bully me constantly and the other eight simply ignored what was happening. Out of the seven bullies, four did some particularly heavy crap. I will call them the B team. You can guess what B stands for. While the other three did some random lighter things, throwing paper scraps at me, stealing pencils and things like that. I will call them the C team. All acted as followers for the B team. What the B team did to me scarred me for life and I had to go to therapy to deal with it. If I met them today, I would make them pay for everything they did to me. My hatred for the C team is not nearly as big, but it's still vivid. Until last year, I couldn't bring myself to forgive anybody in that classroom, both teachers and students, for doing nothing to help me when the B team was tormenting me. Last year though, my hatred started to fade following some serious events in my life. Sorry, I won't share what events. When I transferred, I swore to myself I would never go back to that town or talk to any of them ever again. Despite that, my past has found ways to follow me. I work in a pub, not sure if this is the right term in English, part-time twice a week. And around six months ago, I met Nina, 27 female, there by chance. Nina was one of the three bullies of the C team. And while I have forgiven them now, it doesn't mean I want to have anything to do with her. So I try to stay professional and act as if nothing was wrong. Anyway, physically, she hasn't changed much. I mean, she has grown up since middle school, obviously, but I could still recognize her. I'm not sure if I made myself clear. The same cannot be said for me, probably. In middle school, I was fat, white like snow, and I had light brown hair. While now I'm fit, my skin is a bit more pink, and my hair has darkened in the last few years. When some of my friends look at my old photos, they struggle to recognize me. We didn't talk much, as I was working and she initially didn't recognize me. But when one of my colleagues called me to ask me for something, she connected the dots. I have a particular name that is rare in our country, as it's really old-fashioned and nobody uses it anymore. Imagine, I don't know, being called Aristotle today? Once she recognized me, her demeanor changed drastically and she got out pretty soon. She came back a couple of times in the following months and she was quite shy toward me whenever we interacted. Few weeks ago, she got mildly drunk and she started sobbing and ranting about what a crappy person she was in the past and how her life is crap. It was the classic drunken rambling and I didn't pay it much attention. 
I simply stopped serving her alcohol and gave her some water, but at some point she grabbed my hand while I was taking away one of the empty glasses and she apologized. I have to say it felt weirdly good. She didn't come back in for the following weeks, but a few days ago she texted me on social media, apologizing profusely for whatever she did while drunk, and then she suddenly asked me out. At the time, I was evidently too stupid or tired to understand clues, and didn't understand it was meant as a date. She asked me out for a coffee, and I thought she simply wanted to apologize in person, or talk about the past in a more sober state. I realized my mistake yesterday when I talked about it with a friend. Now I'm torn on what I should do. On one side, what Nina did in the past has conditioned me greatly, and I can't simply forget about it. On the other, she really looks apologetic, and she seems to have changed. It's been 15 years, and maybe I should give her a chance. And here's Opie's update. I, 27 male, wasn't sure about doing an update post, but I thought it would be fair to update you on how the situation evolved. I decided to meet Nina, 27 female, for that coffee. It was awkward, but it wasn't that bad. She apologized profusely about the past. I thought her apologies would make me feel good, but to be honest, I was wrong. The truth is that I still think badly of the Nina who bullied me in middle school, but I couldn't see that Nina in the current Nina. I don't know if what I'm trying to say makes sense, or if my brain finally decided to give up on me. Her voice, her demeanor, everything except for her face is completely different. I told her exactly how what she and the other bullies did affected me, and then I decided to forgive her, more or less. I decided to start over as strangers and I told her as much. I told her that while I couldn't forget what she did in the past, I don't know the current Nina. It's been 14 years since those times, more than half of our lives passed since then, and I firmly believe people can change. I did. So if she wanted to try and to get to know the current me, we could act as if this was the first time we met and move on from then. I don't know if this decision shows my maturity or my stupidity. I guess the future will tell. I admit what she did next made me giggle a bit. I think she took it from a film, but I don't remember which one. She stood up and got out of the coffee shop, then came back in, sat down and introduced herself. We chatted for a bit and it was okay. I want to thank the people who gave me advice in the comment section of the previous post. Opie made it clear in his comments that he and Nina are not a romantic couple, they are not dating, he's just getting to know her as a potential friend. Well Opie, it certainly is your choice if you want to give Nina another chance. For some people it is better to never have any kind of contact with people who bullied them when they were children. But then I can also see how for some it can be a healing experience. So I guess everything OP is okay as long as Nina doesn't cross any boundaries. As long as you are comfortable knowing her on some level, then I suppose everything is fine. And it does seem like she is really remorseful, that she's really sorry for the way she treated you. And you know, not everybody is. Some people never give it a second thought about the pain they caused other people in the past. So I hope OP that this is something that's going to help you heal further. Well, that's it for now. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing, leave me a comment, and I'll see you again next time. Take care of yourself. Bye.